Hare Krishna. So thank you for coming today. And we'll speak on the topic of teamwork based on the Ramayana. Broadly, I'll talk from the Sundar Kand, which is the time when the monkeys go out in search for Sita. And we'll talk about how Hanuman emerges as a natural leader despite not being the appointed leader. See, whenever we work in a team, at that time, there are different people with uh, different abilities, uh, different people with uh, different levels of maturities. So, to get all of them to work together mm, is a challenge. Now, one way we might say that in a team, let's ev let everyone be equal. Mm. Our current age is the age of egalitarianism. Everybody be equal. Now, functionally, conceptually, equality sounds very good. But functionally, equality can be chaotic. Or at best, it can be unproductive. Say, if we want to cook food. And if we decide, let everyone be equal. Let everyone play equal roles while cooking. But some people might naturally be better at cooking than others. Now, if somebody is more talented, more knowledgeable, more experienced, more talented, then it makes sense that they lead the effort. So, then if they lead the effort, naturally a hierarchy is formed. So, we could say there are two things. There is the equality and there is hierarchy. So, whenever there is any problem that we need to face and life gives us many many problems throughout so whenever any task is to be done whenever any problem is to be faced uh, not everyone is equally competent at dealing with all problems so in the interest of solving the problem and ultimately in the interest of everyone it is best if those who are good at solving that problem, they are allowed to lead. So they then a natural hierarchy is formed. So equality in concept sounds very attractive, but in practice, hierarchy is required. However, a lot depends on how the hierarchy is formed and how it functions. If somebody who is at the top of the hierarchy is there not because they are really good. It is because somehow by some factor apart from competence, maybe just power, it could be brute power, physical power, political power, whatever, financial power. By that they get to the top of the hierarchy and that does not lead them to actually doing the responsibility that comes at the top of the hierarchy. Then that hierarchy tend towards tyranny. So when we long for equality or when we want to avoid hierarchy, it's often because there is this fear of tyranny. That whoever is at the top of the hierarchy, they may exploit us. They may further their own interests instead of the team's interests. So in any team, broadly speaking, there, are, there is a tension between these two factors. Now, every team member needs to be valued and in one sense there is a longing for equality. But also for the team to function, there has to be a hierarchy. But sometimes in the hierarchy, there can be tyranny. So either way, Teamwork becomes tense. Normally, also there are uh, when people have to work together, there is some tension because different people have different opinions. But especially teamwork becomes difficult when there is a hierarchy that is formed, and in that hierarchy, there is uh, naturally some resentment. Why is this person at the top? 
now suppose if we are cooking and we only have to eat the food you know i say sometimes a simplified version of the law of karma is what you cook you will have to eat <laughs> so like that if we consider that if we are going to eat the food and we are in a team cooking then we would agree you are a good cook you take the lead yeah, not that i want to avoid work but it will not be good enough so when the results of not functioning in a hierarchy are very immediately apparent to us say for example if we are going in a car and say we are not very good drivers and it's a tough road see so you drive basically we are giving power to that person but because there what happens the result of not functioning according to hierarchy are immediately visible in the car may we may meet with an accident but quite often in life <coughs> the results of not working according to hierarchy may not be so immediately visible and then we may resent you know why is this person here say i am here this person is <coughs> here in higher up than me in hierarchy why is this person there and some especially if we feel that we are more competent than the person who is higher up in the hierarchy that's when it becomes very difficult to have a team spirit because you know actually we are meant to do this and i can do this better than this person then why is this person giving orders and i am following orders now of course it is very easy to think that we can do things better than the way they are being done but actually when you start doing things everything is complicated everything seems easy till you start doing it <laughs> even uh, cooking might seem simple but when we cook and we burn food we hey, i have eaten cooked food thousands of times but i realize it's not easy oh we may say i speak all day but once when i do speak in public hey i still freeze maybe it's not that easy so when whenever somebody else is doing something it's very easy to criticize it this is not being done well it should be done like this but everything seems easy till we do it ourselves till we start doing it ourselves and then we start realizing the challenges so often there may be a tendency to reject the hierarchy but if the hierarchy is rejected we may not have equality what we may have is chaos or we can have even disaster if say in a plane if we say the pilot and the passenger are equal anybody can cook in the pilot nobody will want to sit in that plane then eventually so we can we if we look at our life itself everywhere there are hierarchies now we agree to be a part of a hierarchy if we feel that our that whatever position we have in the pecking order whatever position we have in the hierarchy that is beneficial for us say for example you have come for a this class now so in a sense there's a hierarchy there's a speaker and there's a audience now uh, you feel that maybe by coming for this class you're going to benefit something so we participation in the hierarchy we continue it voluntarily as long as we feel it's beneficial sometimes of course even when you feel it's not beneficial we might be obligated to be a part of hierarchy also then there is resentment why do i have to be here why do i have to be here in this position so so this is the broad background about how hierarchy so there is the desire for equality but there is also the need for hierarchy and how do these two go together that is the universal tension in every interpersonal interaction whether it be a uh, in a family between husband and wife between parents and children between uh, teams in a professional setting between devotees working to do seva do service that there is a hierarchy but there is also there is a desire for equality there is also need for hierarchy so basically and now there are some natural hierarchies natural hierarchies means it is parents who give birth to children 
so parents are in a controlling position children are in a obeying position mm. if there is a there is a law of the government then there is the say traffic officers they are at the top of the hierarchy all the people in the who are driving they have to follow the rules so there are some natural hierarchies which are essential for functioning but whenever a particular task is to be done say we form a team for that task and then within that a hierarchy is to be formed now say we are doing this task for the first time we may not even be sure how good who is at a particular task so then there might be what you call an appointed hierarchy and there might be an emergent hierarchy appointed hierarchy means this person is at the top this person are lower but then as things are done gradually what happens oh this person is actually better so let them take care emergent hierarchy so for example if we consider a team say a, a cricket team now in a in a in a cricket team maybe there is some batsman who is very aggressive and that person can score runs very fast and then other players just play the anchoring role you know just be there give the strike to the player so that would be the natural hierarchy this person scores a lot that person just feels the strike and gives the strike but suppose on a particular day so that that is the, you could say the appointed hierarchy you be the attacker and the others will be the uh, you could say anchors but then maybe on a particular day the a player is in a very good form and although that player normally plays the role of a sheet, a sheet anchor means anchoring the innings that person is in a very aggressive mood playing very well then even the person who is normally aggressive he may say that okay today you are batting well you you be the aggressor i'll play the sheet anchor role so what that means is there is a emergent hierarchy so natural appointed hierarchy is the way things were planned emergent hierarchy is how things actually work out and sometimes the hierarchies may change so at one level if the team is to form in the beginning itself there has to be an acceptance of the appointed hierarchy okay this person is the leader these are all followers but if the so without that the team will not form itself but once the team is formed for the team to function there has to be the willingness for emergent hierarchies you might find oh actually this person is better this person really knows the stuff very well somebody might be a team lead but in a particular area if a particular person is expert they know about say if it's a software you are making software and this person is really good at this particular area then although that person not the official lead they may become the emergent leader so how these tensions are to be dealt with first the tension when an appointed lead is there then the tension when an emergent lead come emergent leader emergent hierarchy comes up an emergent leader comes up that's what we will discuss how based on how the team was formed to search for sita and how the dynamics within that team changed gradually as things moved forward but at this point this is the background any questions or clarifications or comments at this point yes just one question about the hierarchy the hierarchy is not fixed but can it change when circumstances change for example let's say um let's say with the cricket let's say um when it's very cold for example maybe someone else becomes very good at batting can that change as well but it's not a fixed thing it can just change yeah it should be changed it should be allowed to change when it is necessary that's why say basically Uh, can hierarchies change yeah see broadly speaking there are two you could say schools of thought you could say the liberals and the conservatives or you could call them the left wing and the right wing mm -hmm. so the left wing the liberals are generally against hierarchies mm -hmm. so for example communism had the idea that there are the capitalists there are the owners of the means of production and there are the workers and the owners exploit the laborer so down with all destroy all the owners so the in general the left is against hierarchies mm -hmm. so they are you could say broadly speaking the liberals they say you know let people do what they want be liberal about things mm -hmm. so they say that is a hierarchy let's see how we can bring it down mm -hmm. how we can 
make things little more uh, equal, horizontal. Then there are the conservatives, you could say the right. Now, now the right has often got a negative label because we often associate with that with the say right wing religious extremists or whatever. But in general, the idea of the right is that the right wants to stick to hierarchy, stick to order. This is how things have been done. Let's continue them where they are. So now, who is right? Well, it depends. Sometimes the hierarchy needs to be maintained for things to move forward, and sometimes the right is right. You no, know, although there are problems with this hierarchy, every hierarchy has some problems. But if the hierarchy is functioning and is delivering the goods, then move on. So, so uh, sometimes disrupting hierarchy can create a lot of problems, bigger problem than what we thought we was, were going to solve. So, but sometimes the left is right. The hierarchy is leading to a lot of people at the bottom of the hierarchy being exploited, being abused. Uh, then things have to change. So you could say that both the left and the right, the liberals and the conservatives, they have to interact with each other. They have to talk and understand each other so that what is right for that situation can be understood. Like generally, whenever there is any conflict, you know, there's, there is people tell their own story. So every story has how many sides? What do you think? Many people yeah, as many people. If there are two people who are in a conflict, then how many sides of the story? Two. Three. <laughs> my side your side and the right side <laughs> so it's the uh, right side doesn't mean necessarily that see our memory even if oh this person did like this this person did like this when when one person tells the story and another person tells the story it's not even if both people neither of them is uh, is manipulative consciously but still our memory at a subconscious level tends to be selective and that's why we often remember the things which show us in the good light and which show others in the bad light. And if we have done something wrong, often we forget that. Not that we consciously want to forget that, it happens that way. So actually, memory is a tool for the past, history is also a tool for the past. But you know, memory and history are, non are often not entirely overlapping. There are many things in history that are not in memory. That means they happened, but we have forgotten them. And there are many things in memory that are not in history. That means they did happen, but we imagine they happened. So that's called false memories. And the point is that whenever there is a conflict, both have to discuss. So sometimes the hierarchy has to be maintained. This was the appointed hierarchy. This is how we will do things. But sometimes the hierarchy can be adjusted. And this is how things will work better. So the emergent hierarchy comes up. Okay, then now, if you want to do this, this, this is how it will work better. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> that's so hierarchy, in principle, hierarchy is required. In practice, whether the pre appointed hierarchy is the best way to move forward, or we need to have a more of a horizontal structure, or we have had a new hierarchy, that has to be seen. So, what will keep both the left and the right together, the liberals and the conservative together? is not the focus on the practice, but focus on the purpose. Focus on the practice means this is how we have been doing, this is how we will keep doing all the time. No, but is this doing this leading to the result? Now this is unfair, let us not do it. No, but this is producing the result, so let us continue it. So if we get too caught in the practices alone, should it be done like this or should it be done like that, then often the conflict can become interminable. But if we focus on the purpose, okay, we are doing this, is this the right thing to do? Is this the right way to do things? How do we decide that? It depends on uh, the, the purpose. Where do, we want to, where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Say like if, say before the pre-GPS time, if we were driving a car and now we know a particular way. And uh, say, we, okay, I'll lead, the, I'll drive the car, I'll take it along. But then that road is blocked, it's heavy traffic. And then somebody else says, yeah, I know that way, and that will be free at this time. 
oh okay then you take the wheels so the original hierarchy was i'll be the driver but no should you be the driver or should i be the driver so the appointed hierarchy might be there but the hierarchy you change instead of i driving you drive because the purpose is what needs to be focused on so if we keep focus on the purpose then we can adjust things okay thank you any other questions yes, yes please sir, for my question because um, i had the problem when i was studying community dance and we have mixed style levels like people who are dancing and less experienced dancing and less experienced dancing so when you have a technical class it was very nice because it was for the ones who know that but when you go to um, creativity experimental class then you would have to straight it because you couldn't really explore or get involved really much because the ones who knew better so you have to work in groups and create something together so the ones who knew more just tell you what to do really so if you didn't experience or learn anything just you didn't really you know what I mean so yeah yeah so that was the purpose was different it didn't really work as well as when it was technical purpose you know? so you should, should have been more particip participatory kind of thing instead of just follow the ones who know better mm -hmm. that's true yeah you know it depends a lot on context say for example Sometimes if a, if a class is there, there's a lot of interaction in the class. Now if it's a philosophical technical subject which is the focus is more of educational, then maybe the speaker needs to speak more. But if it is more practical, then maybe there are group tasks, there's more interaction, then learn, things become learned more. So how the thing should function, that a lot depends on purpose. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So let's uh, start. <coughs> the uh, in the Ramayana, when the monkeys are called by Sugriv, they all assemble. They are in different parts of the earth. They come, and then Sugriv tells them that all of you need to go and search for Sita. And he appoints a group to go to the south because south is most likely where Sita is to be found. They had seen Ravan fly in the southern direction. Now, of course, it could be that uh, Ravan might be deceiving also. Sometimes you, know, you go in a particular direction and then you change directions. That's how sometimes, say, if somebody is, is a car chase and somebody is pursuing someone, you create a decoy or a deception. That is so they, that's why they, he sent people in all four directions. But, but still, uh, it was more likely that Ravan would be in the south because he also knew that Lanka, Ravan's kingdom was on that side, broadly speaking. And even if that, that awareness was not very clear, but still, of course, even if you say Lanka is there, whether he has gone to Lanka or he's gone somewhere else, you don't know. And at that time when Ravan was flying high above the sky, he did not perceive these monkeys down there as threats. So there's no need for him to deceive them. So, so he formed the most, uh, so Sugriv, considering that Ravan was most likely to be in Lanka, he formed a team to uh, search for Sita in the south. Now in that team, there are many members, but three were prominent. Who were those three? Hanuman, anyone else? Angad, Jambavan, yes, thank you. Neil and others were also there, but these three were prominent. Now, each of them had something uh, to commend them. Jambavan was senior. He was the oldest, most experienced, wisest, you could say. Then, <coughs> Angad was royalty. He was the son of the previous king, the nephew of the current king. And although he was young, he was also valiant. Now Hanuman till this point has not really manifested his power in a big way. Till this point, Hanuman is primarily like an assistant of Sugri.
he is not fought any major wars does anyone know why hanuman is not prominent till now because he uh, was he was cursed to forget his own powers yes he was cursed to forget his own powers when he was a small child at that time he was very mischievous and then he was cursed the so the sages didn't want to curse to punish him but they wanted to curse to curb him so they said you have we won't take away your abilities but we will take away your memory of your abilities so now it's interesting that he still had some abilities that's how when he wanted to approach ram he changed his form and he took the form of a brahmin a wise person and first time approached brahm and they had a talk at that time he still had some of his powers but it was not like a dazzling display of powers so hanuman was also an important member but hanuman was not like the official leader of the team sometimes say i because for most of us cricket is familiar so i'll use some cricket examples in america if i use cricket the first thing they think about is the insect <laughs> 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 so anyone unfamiliar with cricket here <laughs> okay unfamiliar unfamiliar unfamiliar, unfamiliar no uh, yeah okay unfamiliar i'm saying you are unfamiliar i'm familiar familiar okay no, no, no. not familiar okay <laughs> sure <laughs> okay so say <clears throat> sometimes the star player in a team is the captain But sometimes the star player may be a great individual performer, but might not be a good captain. And then somebody else is the captain. The star player is the star. So there are different ways in which things function. So now, among all the vanaras, the the first vanara that Ram had met was Hanuman, and they had naturally bonded. Of course, at a spiritual level, we can say Hanuman is the eternal devotee of the Lord, and uh, that's true. But even at the functional level, they had bonded very nicely, and Ram had that indication or faith or whatever that Hanuman would be the person who would find Sita. And thus, among all the people who were going in various directions, Ram gave his signet ring only to Hanuman. It's interesting that Angad was the leader. but ram gave this to hanuman now angad was made the leader because he was born in royalty and angad was in a peculiar situation at one level his father had recently been killed and it was like he had to be working with the person who had caused the death of his father Now Angad did not in any way blame Ram, although Ram had shot the arrow which led to the death of Wali. He knew Ram had no personal enmity with Ram with Wali. It was Sugri who had asked Ram, so he still had some resentment towards that. After all, his father had been killed, and it was difficult for him to work. But before dying, Wali had told Sugri. that angad and tara they are blameless no angad was too small when all this happened and tara is my wife she told me repeatedly to patch up to reconcile with you but i did not listen to her so please don't take out any of my anger again ang- your anger towards me against them and he told both of them to live under the shelter of sugri so <coughs> although there was some resentment but because of that submission because of the instruction of his father that was like that was like his last wish so angad was living in uh, living with sugriv and doing his will because he was also although his royalty still he was not the king he was he was subordinate to the king so sugriv also knew that angad had some Uh, reservations about his leadership about his position so sometimes he had to give people space so he made angad the leader you are going in a group although he was young so you should become the leader 
and everybody accepted that hanuman as well as uh, jambavan and others accepted that and they started searching now they were told that all of you have to return within one month and normally so whenever any service is given uh, accountability is required how well is the service being done as i sometimes people work from home and it's difficult to keep track now whether you are working from home or you are working for home <laughs> it's difficult to keep track so any service accountability is required imagine you are in a plane and i said this is a pilot speaking today i am working from home really <laughs> the the passengers we also want to go home now <laughs> you don't want to be there so any service some amount of accountability has to be there so what sugriv said is oh, now when you are going for searching it's a big task so he is uh, any a big task can become like a elephant it can become like a whale it can become huge so he said that all of you should search and come back within one month because you know any task that we do do it has there has to be a cap on it because otherwise any task can become infinite so if we are if we decide that okay you know i lost my phone i want to search for my phone okay now you can search for it but how much time do you spend searching for it if you spend one day you spend two days you spend five days maybe you think you know maybe it's not worth spending so much time better let me get a new phone so any task can be expanded unlimitedly so he said all of you have to come back within one month because searching it is a phone lost in the places where we go that also is difficult to search but somebody whom whom most of the monkeys had never met somebody who don't even know where they are to search for that person is a very difficult thing so come back within a month now generally what happens among kshatriyas when instructions are given or when words are spoken often there is a kshatriya spirit you know two warriors are fighting they may say today i will send you to the abode of death today your body will become the food of vultures so there is that uh, rhetorical intimidation which is a part of kshatriya culture so as per that sugriva said anybody who comes who delays coming back who is a lagger who doesn't come within one month they will be executed that is not that he is going to execute them but there has to be some fear some threat you know things have to be done so now the vanara started uh, with hanuman carrying the signet and they all knew we have to come back within one month and they went south they went towards the south 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 and they went down 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 they searched in caves they searched in forests they searched in oh, wherever they could they couldn't find sita anywhere eventually they started feeling hungry thirsty they couldn't they were there in such a wilderness patch that there was no water available they came near a big mountain and then they saw and over there oh uh, from a cave some birds were coming out and their wings were dripping with water oh maybe there's water here so they decided to go in they peeked in and they saw it didn't seem like a cave it seemed like a catacomb it seemed like a whole network of dark paths inside so i thought now outside that search they couldn't find any water anywhere so they decided let's go in and then hanuman went in the front and all of them held each other one by one sometimes in the dark it's one, we are searching for something or we going somewhere but one possibility is going to get lost so they all held on to each other and they formed a long queue and they went in and in and in and in and in sometimes when you go into a dark place now when is it going to end is it going to end also so as they are going deep some of the monkeys are whispering you know 
Oh, maybe we should go back. No, I don't know. We will we'll find something over here. No, but now we will be so tired that we may not be able to go back also if we don't find anything. So naturally, some dissension started happening. Generally, when things are working, then people don't complain. But when things stop working, and everybody starts complaining. You see, what happens after the event, everybody is expert of how it should have happened. <laughs> like recently, there was a Cricket World Cup, and India was expected to do very well, but India lost in the semi finals. And after India lost in the semi finals, like, there are hundreds of people. You know, saying, oh, you know, this batsman should have been sent first, this baller should have been given the ball leg, this one should have done like this. So everybody is expert about how things are to be done. <laughs> so that when things don't work, that's how it is. So then they said, no, we should not go, we should go. We should move on, we should not move on. But Hanuman kept relentlessly moving forward. And finally, in the distance, they could see some light. Now, when they saw that light, what is it? They came forward and then they saw it is like a mystical place. There were trees which seemed to be luminous and those trees had beautiful lush, uh, lush fruits, or lush greenery over there and juicy fruits and it seemed like a mansion over there along with well taken care of gardens with orchards with fruits and lots of food to it. The monkeys became jubilant. He said, let's go and eat. Hanuman said, wait, wait, wait. He said, whose is this? What is this? You know, this is so beautiful. It just can't be existing automatically over here. It must be belonging to someone. And he looked around and then he, as he looking around, he saw in the distance there was a uh, somebody sitting. And so the, the body was effulgent. As he looked forward, he looked carefully and he saw that was a it was a female, it was a yogini. And this as they went closer and closer, Hanuman saw that there was effulgence coming from her body. And he very respectfully approached her and he told all the monkeys. The monkeys are restless uh, and they are already hungry which makes them even more restless. But he stop, stop here. And then he approached her and he said that, you know, oh lady, who are you? And what are you doing here? Doing meditation over here? And what is this place? And then he introduced himself. I'm Hanuman. I am the servant of Sugriva and we are on the mission uh, given by, by Ram. And this is, she said, I am Swayam Prabha. Swayam Prabha means self effulgent. And she said that I will stay here as the guardian of this place. And this place is actually constructed by the architect, the celestial architect, the Mayada now. And it was used by him, but eventually there was a fight between him and Indra and Indra. Indra took it over and Indra had an Apsara who, who used to live here and then Indra asked her to come so, so he won this and then he Indra gave this to his, this Apsara who was very dear to him but after that Indra wanted that Apsara to be here with him so he took her to heavens and then she asked me to be here as a guardian and now Hanuman sometimes when you speak something People don't voice the question, but there's a question which is a question mark on their face. Uh, so Hanuman had thinking, you know, this is a this is a forest, this is such a big place, and how is she going to guard it? I should say that I have been. So then she noticed that question, that thought. Uh, how are you going to guard this? So said that actually, I have been blessed with yogic powers. It is by my yogic powers that I protect this. Oh Hanuman, if any of you had eaten the fruits without my permission, without taking permission from me, you would have died. So the protection was that nobody could disrupt things over there without being harmed themselves. 
So Hanuman's maturity was, when you see something wonderful, when you see something great, don't presume it is for you. Don't presume it is for you. Ask whose it is. And he said, oh, because you are in a cultured way, ask for me. And because you are the, because you are serving Ram, you can have these fruits as much as you want. And then, so here we see Angad was the leader, but Hanuman was known to be good at speaking. Hanuman was expert at speaking in a way which could connect with people. Often when we get upset, then we think, we speak to give others a piece of our mind. Yeah, I'll tell you what, what you're doing. You know? Actually, we should, give, we should speak to give others peace of mind. But we give them a piece of our mind. And then we take away their peace of mind. And then they take away our peace of mind. <laughs> and it just, <laughs> it just degenerates. <laughs> So, at that time, uh, Hanuman, because he was expert at speaking, and everybody knew that Hanuman was a good speaker. So, that's why even earlier, when Ram and Lakshman were going through the forest, and Sugriva noticed, who are these two people who come? He said, Hanuman, you find out. And when Hanuman spoke, at that time, uh, Ram said, oh, he's so learned, his speech is so sweet. Just by hearing him speak, all my anxiety of the mind is gone, all the tiredness has gone away. Some, some people's speech is very jarring, some people's speech is very soothing. So, uh, his speech is very soothing and very sweet. So now here, with respect to this, although Angad was a leader, Angad also knew Hanuman is expert at speaking. So Angad naturally allowed Hanuman to speak. And Hanuman, because he was there, he was not an appointed leader, but he was in, the, in this particular verse, per case, he was an emergent leader. And as the emergent leader, he saved the day for them. He, without even knowing, they could have rushed into dangers. In this world, often pleasure seems to be present at many places. Nowadays, especially on the internet, or so many things, so many things free available. You know, whenever any product is free, that means that we are the product. <laughs> we are the real product. You know? They give something free so that they will catch our consciousness. So some programs, some say, say movie streaming channel or something, they'll say, oh, 15 days free. And then in free, people watch so much and they get hooked to it. And then they become ready, I have to pay this. So what happens? Uh, in this world, nothing comes free. Mm -hmm. And whenever anything seems too good to be true, it is probably too good to be true. <laughs> some things, there must be some catch somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, in this forest, in this wilderness where they were starving, and suddenly, like a magnificent, lush greenery and lavish natural abundance came up. How did it come up? He says, this is not by chance. It's probably this is. So Hanuman had that maturity. And then, when Hanuman and Swami Prabhupada spoke, Hanuman said, okay, you can eat now. And they all went and they drank water and they ate abundant food. And they rested and they got rejuvenated. And he said, now, we have to search for Sita. And so then Hanuman turned towards Swayam Prabha and he said that, Mm, how do we now, thank you for providing us this hospitality, this food, how do we go out from here now? So see, in general, in our life journey, wherever path we want to go, there are broadly, it's an individual journey or a team journey. There are two, you could say, kind of obstacles that come. One is temptation and the other is tribulation. We are going on this particular path. Temptation means just go off this path, you can get some pleasure. Hmm? Tribulation means that, oh, this path has so much trouble in it. Why do we want to go? This path you can't move on. In anything we want to do in our life, say we want to, we want to study for an exam. Then the temptation might be, while we are studying, suddenly our 
phone gives a notification your friend has updated their facebook profile photo oh let me just see that photo and you click and see that one photo and maybe one more photo and then what we thought will be one minute maybe one hour will go three hours will go in that so temptation that's one distraction hmm? the other is tribulation you are studying it's too difficult it requires too much effort maybe i should be doing this maybe this is never going to work out and then we may stop uh, so this can happen at an individual level it can also happen at team level mm -hmm. so now the vanaras they face this temptation that oh just pounce on those foods and eat them and that could have been the not normal monkey tendency but hanuman said no and they were protected from the danger that came because of the temptation then now a tribulation came upon them what was that tribulation swayam prabha is even hanuman asked what is the way out from here so she said there is no way out from here what he says there is no way out from here now as soon as the monkeys heard this they became angry you know oh, see it's it's good to be comfortable but nobody wants to be confined somebody said there's no way out of here what tell me the way there must be a way so the monkeys started advancing aggressively hanuman said stop 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 he says what do you mean he said that those that when indra asked me to guard this one arrangement he made for the protection was that even if those who could enjoy the fruits and luxury facilities over here if they go out then they will tell everyone else that there's so much over here and then people will come and plunder and ruin this so for the protection of this place indra has arranged that anybody who comes in they can never go out now this can be very scary to hear come here you can never go out from here hanuman just maintained his calm and he said okay but then when we saw that there were those birds they were flying out of here and there wings were water so they had also reached the water so swayam prabhu smiled he said yes but they are not a threat to me they are not a threat so hanuman said we are also not a threat he says no uh, you may tell you may tell other monkeys and they may come over here he says no no we are not going to do that he says we want, we are here only to serve lord ram this is far away from our homes we are here on a mission to serve ram and we need to go urgently so hanuman honestly begged her he told her that we are no threat to you i am sure there must be a way out he said yes the only way out is that you i can take you out but then you will not know you have to close your eyes you cannot see and you will go out and you will not know how you the path out the path in back from this he said okay he told all the monkeys close your eyes and they closed the eyes and then swayam prabha used her mystic powers and they suddenly they said open your eyes and they opened their eyes and they saw they were on near a mountain and it looked magnificent uh, they seen the bright light of the sun the big sky and they said that now i brought you out and as they were looking out here and there they noticed that they had not come out at the same place they were in and swayam so prabha said now i am going back and he says because they had such a sincere desire to serve ram so what swayam prabha did was this big mountain range inside this the cave was there so they came in from this side and swayam prabha brought them out on the other side so that now they don't have to go through the labor of scaling the mountain and thus they came closer to the destination so again hanuman's careful speech saved the day so we all can get angry we all can get provoked you know all of us would like to say give good speeches if we are called upon to give and if we generally if we give a bad speech we'll regret it oh, i didn't speak so well 
but if we get angry often when we get angry we will give the best speech that we will ever regret <laughs> <laughs> anger often makes us shed all our inhibitions we might be shy we might be stage scared and whatever but if we're angry we'll go out and speak i will give the best speech that we will ever regret <laughs> so we'll speak without any reservation but often we'll speak something many things which we would regret afterwards which we should not have spoken so for chanakya pandit also says for a warrior for a king who wants to conquer the world the first skill to learn is the skill of the tongue not the skill of the sword it is the skill of the tongue skill of speaking because a, a king might be a great warrior and it's important for a king to them himself be good at fighting but a victory doesn't depend only on the king fighting well the king has to inspire the army to fight and that requires skill of the tongue to speak so we see hanuman's expertise here where he naturally emerges as a leader and then as they have emerged out they start searching again so this is so i'll be talking about three main incidents uh, so this was the first incident where hanuman starts emerging as a leader based on his speaking skills his maturity his emotional maturity his verbal expertise the second incident i'll talk about their interaction sampatti and the third interaction is a third incident will be about hanuman preparing to leap across to lanka so any questions at this point yeah well <laughs> are leaders born or are they made i have addressed this in i have written a book on 10 leadership sutras from bhagavad gita i have addressed that in that so there is uh, you could say two kinds of leadership there is public leadership and personal leadership public leadership means uh, so the ability to inspire others the ability to lead a team per se a group of people and that requires a certain set of skills maybe that as that requires um, uh, eloquence verbal expertise that requires organization delegation uh, accountability keeping track there are certain skills which are required for public leadership and some people may have it those skills some people may not have those skills but more important than public leadership is personal leadership personal leadership is that means we should be able to lead ourselves according to our principles according to our values we should be able to lead our mind our senses in a way that is consistent with who we want to be if somebody is a public leader without being a personal leader they may lead for some time but sooner or later everything will collapse so they might be very powerful like a like a king might be mm, very powerful a good leader in terms of public leadership good warrior good speaker but say if the king is not able to have personal leadership then the enemy might send some seductive woman and the king might just fall for her and then she might poison and kill him. so if the if there is public leadership without personal leadership then there might be success for some time but things will collapse but if there is personal leadership then even if a person is not an appointed leader still that person can inspire others all of us through our day to day actions whatever we do it influences others every action that we do has its influence has its impact so therefore uh, personal leadership is something which every one of us can do so in terms of public leadership there are certain skills which some people may be born with now can others develop it they can 
but it may not come naturally to them and they may not develop them to as much extent as those who had them inborn and has had those coming naturally so some people might be very good speakers but they might not be very good delegators and organizers strategic planners uh, so some people might be strategic planners but they might not be very good speakers some people might so these skills can they be developed yes they can be but there is uh, an innate talent which uh, which cannot be replaced by a large amount of practice alone so personal leadership is something which every one of us can develop public leadership is something which uh, uh, we are largely born with and that can also be developed but not in a significantly dramatic way may not be so in that sense we all can be leaders whether we become whether we become public leaders or not that will vary from person to person okay thank you yes along that same line of thought um would you say that emotion intelligence is uh, more valuable than um, raw intelligence which intelligence then emotional intelligence then second one raw intelligence you know like IQ. analytic okay raw intelligence okay is emotional intelligence more important than say raw intelligence or analytical ability yes it's difficult to uh, compare the two in the sense that both have their utility in their particular fields so if somebody is a mathematician and that's the that's the field they are specializing in then without having adequate iq without having adequate raw intelligence you cannot function in that field so certain in certain specific fields the raw intelligence is also required uh, and iq is required for certain areas but uh, emotional quotient is something which emotional intelligence is something which everyone needs mm -hmm. and especially if somebody is going to work in a team work in a community then emotional intelligence is more important than than intelligence inter so just could say raw intelligence because raw intelligence may enable us to become to excel individually but it is emotional intelligence which will enable us to excel while working with others okay thank you you had a question yeah Okay. Yeah. Good question. So even in personal leadership, say some people naturally are maybe more self-controlled. They are already born in goodness. So then, what is the difference between personal and public? Yeah. Mm. See, there are there's the soul, there's the mind, there's the body. Mm. Now you cannot rigidly differentiate between the mind and the body in terms of uh, what. is an ability coming from where say if somebody has singing ability is that ability of the body or the mind you could say at one level the body the ability of the body the throat is it produces very sweet sounds mm -hmm. but it's not just that mm -hmm. the mind also has to be attuned to speak that to to sing that way to do what it takes to sing regularly mm, in general you could say that the um so you could talk about if but still you could differentiate between abilities and qualities mm. abilities are more functional skills to do certain things qualities are more character centered virtues uh one way to differentiate is you could call it talent and temperament mm. so talent you could say it's more physical mm. say somebody is you know an expert batsman they just can hit shots which other players can't even dream about so that's talent mm -hmm. but temperament means to know when i should hit that shot or when i should just play defensively that maturity to choose that's temperament 
so in general achievement requires talent and temperament both mm. so based on our past karma we get both the body and the mind mm. and among the body and the mind which is more changeable mind. yeah you could say it's more difficult to change but it is more changeable if you work on it if say somebody has white skin and they want to change it somebody has dark skin and they want to change it to white white skin that's quite difficult you know if somebody is say four and a half feet and they want to become seven and a half feet well that's almost impossible so at the level of the body the kind of physical attributes we have and the physical abilities we have so some voices are naturally sweet some voices may not be sweet now still you can speak in a sweet tone but speaking in a sweet tone is not the same as actually having a sweet voice isn't it so when i talked about uh, public leadership i was talking more in terms of the physical abilities mm -hmm. so of course you could say that uh, speaking ability is it physical or it's psychological that's why i said it's not a like a rigid differentiation but it's a broad indication of the differentiation it's a, so that there are certain you could say certain things which we get from the past which fall more towards the ability side and there are certain things which we get from the past which fall from which fall more towards the quality side and now again you could go into a hair splitting difference between what is ability and a quality let's not go into that direction but what i'm saying is that pers the whatever is required for personal leadership there is there is a greater possibility to change that but what is required for public leadership there there may not be that much possibility to change that so certainly some people might be more suited to be personal leaders than others and that difference can also come from past lives but the capacity for changing is more with respect to personal leadership than public leadership okay. thank you any other question yes please charisma yeah charisma is a gift it's a special gift which some people have which some people develop also over time and that can be a very powerful tool for attracting leadership uh charisma it's almost mysterious what comes comprises charisma but it's also a challenge that leadership that is um based on charisma hmm, it can be very powerful but it can also be very meteoric goes up like a meteor and it comes down often after a charismatic leader say their tenure ends or they depart then everything can crumble if everything is based on the charisma only things can crumble that's why in many ways uh, whenever any organization is based on a charismatic leadership then uh, then the succession becomes very turbulent and succession requires what is called uh, in organizational theory as the routinization of the charisma that means the charisma has to be passed on to the structures of the organization and that is often very difficult to do so charismatic leadership can be very commanding but it it is not very sustainable so if we have charisma we use it if we don't have still we do the best that we can okay. thank you okay so before we go to the second and third instance do we need to have break now should we have after 20, after about half an hour more what would you prefer how many of you want a short break now 5 10 minutes Twelve. Well, maybe then because if I start the incident, it'll at least go to twelve ten. It'll take a twenty-five thirty minutes. Twelve ten is okay. Okay, fine. So now, after they emerged from that cave, they again started searching. And although initially they were elated, now they were nourished. they were having food water they were energized but still they were no closer to actually finding sita they started searching searching and soon they realized that they couldn't find her anywhere 
and despair started setting in and as the despair started setting in that is the time when the monkey said what to do we have searched for so long now they had been in that swayam prabha's uh, <clears throat> cave also for quite some time before that also they had been searching now one month had already got over some of the vanaras said that let us go back and inform wali of what has happened she says no 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 we have come so far again for us to come here will be difficult let's keep searching let's keep searching till we find mm. so then uh, as they would keep searching but eventually nobody was finding anything they kept searching kept searching and then gradually despair started spreading further and further and he said so where are we going to find sita let's go back and angad said angad became even more desperate you know it's like uh, say uh, he is young he has been appointed the leader of the team and the team has failed it like say you have a new captain of a team and the captain goes for a cricket team and you go for a tournament and you just fail dismally now sometimes especially in india where people are very emotional if you win there will be thousands of people welcoming you if you lose thousands of people will garland you with chappals yeah. with shoes now there can be like a lot of disgrace when you uh, and humiliation when you lose so angad felt mortified thinking that oh if i how can i go back he said he failed over here and if we go back we'll be disgraced and angad's imagination started working now so imagination is a very powerful tool we have but we need to know how to use imagination if our imagination is channeled constructively then we can envision things and then we can get the inspiration to actualize those things so uh, imagination channeled constructively is very powerful but imagination running wild can be very dangerous it can just we can conjure up all kinds of horrifying situations and we can paralyze ourselves with fear when this starts happening you know the mind can say you don't know the future this may go wrong that may go wrong that may go wrong and it just becomes so fearful at that time so when the mind starts conjuring fearful scenarios and what happens is none of us know the future so we may say oh this can happen this can happen so we can get overwhelmed by fear one way to deal with that fear is yes we acknowledge that we don't know the future but then our mind also doesn't know the future <laughs> so just as we can't forecast it even the mind can't forecast it and if the mind can't find is forecasting it that is also speculative so we need to check that fear so how do we so uh, what did angad started thinking angad said that actually wali had sugriva had said that anyone who comes late after one month they'll be executed he said no no that was that is not literal says, many times certain statements are made and just the context tells you that they are not literal hmm? but you know like uh, but sometimes people might take those statements which are non literal literally and then we all have this uh, there are so many metaphors that we have which if we take them literally they can they can uh, they can be completely out of place i was in leicester i think last last year and i gave a class and there was a nice question answers after the class it was a college i think it was a college program or something lot of young people and after that the devotee had organized the program he just came to me with a big smile on his face he said prabhu you killed it <laughs> what did i kill and why are you so happy about it <laughs> so then uh, i realized that he was using that in a non literal sense <laughs> so that phrase comes from the hunting metaphor that is somebody shoots you killed it that means you you shot very well you did very expertly so he was appreciating but <laughs> it was confusing for me so <laughs> so this was not a literal statement but what happens when we want to go, when our mind catches a particular narrative point goes in a particular track it starts 
finding everything to support that narrative. So, says, Sugriva said he's going to kill us. We'll be executed if we don't come back. And he said, actually, you know, Sugriva, he will already be seeing me as a threat to him. And he will just be, he will use this as a, even if he doesn't execute all of you, he will use this as a, as a pretext to have me executed. And rather than being considered a failure in front of all my family and citizens and being humiliated and executed, better I'll stay here itself. I'll not go back. It's like say, the Indian captain says, I'll not go back to India only. <laughs> it says, no, you know, that's too much. But he says, no, nobody is going to. So Hanuman, he naturally, he heard this. Now, Angad was the leader and when Angad starts speaking like this about their king, that naturally causes concern. What we speak matters, but what position and we speak that matters even more. Now, if, you know, if somebody has got a, say, maybe some kind of swelling on their hands or swelling on their body somewhere and I come and tell you, you got cancer, what? Now, if I am not a doctor and I say you got cancer, you are just pessimistic. But the doctor comes and says, you got cancer. Really? No. So what is being said matters, but who is saying it also matters quite a bit. So if there is a hierarchy of leaders, so, so Angad is one leader and Sugriva is another leader. Sugriva is the leader of all the leader. So what happens is, if in a hierarchy of, if there is in a team, and if in the hierarchy of leaders, one leader speaks against another leader who is above them, the result is what? People get demoralized, people get confused. So when Wali, when, when Angad was speaking like this, Hanuman realized that this is going in a terrible direction. Let's stop this. So how do you stop it? He said, actually, Wali has, Sugri will never do like this. He is virtuous and you are his nephew. Now Angad was already desperate. And Angad said, no. He said, you say Sugri is virtuous, but he had his own brother killed at the first opportunity just to get the kingdom. And if he killed his own brother, then what is what stops him from killing his nephew? Now, when he started speaking like this, he said, that king, he said, Sugriva is so hungry for power that he can go to any extent. Now, when he spoke this, all the monkeys became agitated. And Hanuman said, no. Now, Hanuman was naturally very concerned by this. It's like Angad is sowing, is accusing the king of grievous, horrendous things. And he is, he is actually actively fomenting rebellion, insurrection against him. What do you do at such a time? So, one man was trying to persuade Angad. He says, no, actually, Sugri will never do anything without Ram. Uh, without Ram's consent. And Ram will never allow such a thing to happen. He said, no, no, no. Sugri is very cunning. You know, he influenced Ram to kill Wali. So he can influence Ram to kill me also. It's all his imagination going. At this point, Angad said, I am going to sit here and I am not going to go back. And I am going to do Praya Vrata. Praya Vrata is, does anyone know what is Praya Vrata? Fast, Fast till? Death. Till death, yes. Tomorrow the Ekadashi, we do Ekadashi Vrata. <laughs> is it? it? <laughs> uh, Praya Vrata is not to be tried. <laughs> but so that's a traditional way. If somebody feels my life's mission is over, then let me end my life now. So he said, I'll do Praya Vrata. And Angad just sat down. I mean, Angad sat down because he was the appointed leader. What to do? Many of the monkeys, they looked at Hanuman, they looked at Angad, and many of the monkeys sat down near Angad. Now some were left with Hanuman. And Hanuman was saying, no, we have to find Sita. But he just sat down prior to that. This is like a big division. Now, you know, if Prabhupada said, you love for me will be shown by how
how you cooperate. cooperate. Now, the most basic level of co cooperate is at least cooperate. You know, you operate here, I'll operate here, but let us both operate. <laughs> hey, what is really bad is if I, I criticize you and you criticize me and most of our energy goes in that itself. Mm. We sing every morning samsara, in the Mangalarti there is samsara davana in the lok, in the material world is like a forest fire and bringing Krishna's mercy, the spiritual master's mercy, we are meant to extinguish that forest fire. But quite often when we are living in a community we find most of our energy goes in extinguishing the fires that we ourselves have set. That means it is internally only so many problems come up. So dissension is a big problem. Now what does one do at that time? Hanuman had tried his best. He tried to persuade Angad. Now, Angad's point you could say was very unreasonable. From his perspective it might seem reasonable. But it was not. Mm, his fear was just a wild imagination. But he couldn't see it that way. Sometimes when we are faced with a problem and we are trying our best and nothing seems to be solving the problem. And as devotees, we may remember the Lord, we may pray to the Lord. So in the Nam Brahma, it is said that, mm. let's recite, recite this two words. Kapivara Santata Samsmrit Rama. Can you repeat this? Kapivara. I just explain that. Then you can <laughs> Kapi is monkeys. Var is the best of the monkeys. Santat is always. Samsmrita is remembered. So Kapivara Santata Samsmrit Rama. Var Santata Samsmrit Rama. And then he says Tad Gati. In their progress, Vigna. Vigna is the obstacle. The obstacle that came in their path, Dhamsaka, they were destroyed. By whom? Rama. Tad Gati Vigna Dhamsaka Rama. Tad Gati Vigna Dhamsaka Rama. So, now what happened? Hanuman was praying. Hanuman was, you know, remembering Ram, what should I do in such a situation? Sometimes we have a problem and we are not able to deal with the problem. And then we pray for help. And then a bigger problem comes. He says, what happened? I already had a problem and I prayed for help. And something, instead of a solution, a bigger problem has come up. So what happened? Something similar happened over there. There, as they were, as they were talking and discussing, and was remembering the Lord and thinking what to do, pray. And suddenly they saw a giant vulture marching over there. Who was that? Sampati. Yeah, Sampati. And this vulture didn't have wings, so he couldn't fly. And he was just walking along and he said, oh, Providence is very fortunate. Providence is very kind to me. Today I will get to feast on all these monkeys. And all these monkeys were sitting in Prayavrata. And Sampati came and sat next to them, waiting. <laughs> now, <laughs> it is one thing to know to know that I am going to die and to even agree to a, I'll fast to death. But it's quite another thing, somebody is waiting for you to die <laughs> then they are going to eat your body. <laughs> it's, so, all the monkeys became agitated. And now, Sampati was also very powerful was big. The monkeys became alarmed and they didn't know what to do. And actually, among all the mon monkeys, first person who had sat down was Angad. So Sampati went and sat right next to Angad. And Angad's despair became even greater. And then he said, Alas, it seems that despite my best efforts, despite our best efforts, we are all meant to fail and die in the service of Ram. Our fate seems to be like that of Jatayu. Just as he died by serving Ram in vain, we also will die in vain. And the Sampati would just be, what did you speak? What did you speak about Jatayu? So, 
uh, Angad was lost his own thoughts. He says, what? He says, what did you speak about Jatayu? And Angad repeated what he had spoken. He says, Jatayu is dead? He said, yes. Who is Jatayu to you? And there this giant bird suddenly started crying. I said, what? He said, Jatayu was my younger brother. He said, I lost my wings because I was protecting him from the heat. Both of them had flown high into the sky to go near the sun. And when Jatayu started becoming very scalded by the heat, Sampati, Sampati had spread his <coughs> uh, wings and his wings had got burnt. So he said, I sacrificed my wings to save the life of Jatayu and Jatayu is dead. Tell me what happened. Then seeing his intense emotion, they all told, they told the story of what had happened and somebody started crying and he said please help me go near the uh, river and let me offer some water for my brother and then he offered the water and then they were all very moved to see his great distress and then they started thinking Angad at this point oh if you had flown up to the sun that means you must know where Lanka is, isn't it? Sampati had been Sampati had looking very dejected, he shrunk and suddenly he perked up. Oh, he realized that there is something he could do about the death of Jatayu. He said, long ago when I my wings had been lost, I, I wanted to die. But a sage told me that in future you have an important service to do. You will do a service for Ram, for the servants of Ram. <coughs> he says, now is that, he realized that now is the moment for me to do that service. And what is that service? So I can tell you, he says, although my body has weakened, my vision is, my sight has not weakened. And he rose up and he says, across the ocean, there is Lanka. And, in, and he peered carefully and he said, in Lanka, Sita is right now there. Lanka is across the ocean and Sita is there. And as soon as the monkeys heard this, they all became jubilant. Yes, now we've got a clue. Now we know where to find Sita. So you see how rapidly fortunes changed. At one moment, the monkeys were ready to die and they were even those who are not ready to die, they were utterly confused, not knowing what to do. Sometimes when we face a problem, at that time, we may ask for help. But as I said, sometimes we ask for help and a bigger problem comes up. That's what happened. But if we are having a sincere desire to serve, sometimes to that bigger problem, our attention gets shifted from the smaller problem. So two people might be quarreling with each other. But then a bigger service comes up, a bigger challenge comes up, which is a common project. Then they forget their differences. So in this case, Angad, somehow, you know, how things can work, we don't know. Angad needn't have spoken about Jatayu. You know, Angad, had, uh, at that time for him to think about Jatayu and speak about Jatayu, and to speak it exactly at the time when Sampati was right next to him. That, you could say it's a coincidence. But it is said coincidences are God's ways of, remem of remaining anonymous. So, when we keep trying to move on, how things will work out, we don't know. Nobody could have predicted that Sampati would come there and Angad would speak this and Sampati would turn out to be later Jatayu and Sampati would know where Lanka is. They didn't know at all. But, and we are facing difficulties, rather than letting ourselves get consumed by those difficulties, we just get out and try to move on. When we pray for help, sometimes help comes, but not in the way we had expected. In fact, sometimes it may come in the opposite way itself. Like in the Mahabharata also it happens that Draupadi, uh, that when the Pandavas are in the forest and Durvasamuni comes, and he says he wants food. 
and the Akshay Patra has already been washed and kept. So they say that, what do I do? So all the Pandavas are panicky and Draupadi says that, let us, let us pray to Krishna. And she prays to Krishna for help in getting some food. And what happens? Krishna comes and tells her, I am very hungry, give me food. And now it appears like a bigger problem. Is once you couldn't feed the priests, feed the sages and now I can't feed our Lord also. It's like one problem and a bigger problem. But through the bigger problem, sometimes Krishna solves a smaller problem. So you know, when we are dealing with difficulties, we needn't focus so much on the size of the problem. We can focus on the strength of our purpose. If our purpose is to serve Krishna, how big the problem is doesn't matter. The problem will be solved. Not It's not because the problem is solved, we can solve it. Problem is small, so we we'll solve it. And because the problem is big, we can't solve it. Actually, we have certain abilities, but far bigger than our ability is Krishna's ability. So if we have a st strong strength of purpose, then Krishna will make the arrangement. How it will work out, we don't know. But the strength of the purpose, strength of our purpose is what will help us move forward and deal with problems. So here we see, it was in one sense, Angad's failure, his losing, losing of heart. But although at one level, he had lost his will, or he had become dispirited. But still, within his heart, he had the desire to serve Ram. And it was only because of the desire to serve Ram, that's why he could compare himself with Jamba and he could say, oh, he, he was not successful, I was successful. So sometimes practically, we might not be able to do a service, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have to just give up our spirit of serving. Just because some services are not possible for us, so we may, we may be uns we may not be able to do a service, but we needn't lose our service attitude. So doing a service successfully is not always in our hands, but maintaining a service attitude is in our hands. And if we maintain that service attitude, then we will find that we all can move forward. The doors will open which we didn't even know existed. And thus, we can move forward. So we'll have a break now and Whatever questions you have, you can discuss and then we'll go to the last part about Hanuman's emergent leadership. <laughs>